the history of firearms, I don't think there's a more iconic gun than the Colt 1911. Not only has it been a mainstay of American military and American shooting culture for decades, but has it been employed around the world by countless other police forces, military, and shooters. And even though today we have a lot of other options out there that people have turned to, things like striker fire pistols and so forth, the fact of the matter is, is that this battle-proven and time-tested design is still incredibly relevant to today's shooters. And there is a uh, still a devoted cadre of people who not only find the history of this gun incredibly appealing, but they also understand exactly how effective it is. Now, one of the things that's happened to the 1911 over the years is it's evolved. You know, you have everything from the very early kind of uh, GI original versions that have been really kind of tweaked and modified, you know, at different points over the, over the uh, pistol's history. Interestingly enough, when the Colt was taken out of service, as our standard military sidearm, that was actually kind of the moment where all of the all of the new versions of of the 1911 started to blossom. I mean, it's almost like a phoenix rising from the ashes to the point today where we have this incredibly rich variety of pistols to choose from. And what we've done is we've come here to the heart and soul of 1911 culture. We're at the famous Gunsight Academy in Paulden, Arizona, that was founded by legendary pistolero Jeff Cooper, where really the primary focus of what he wanted to do was to teach people, whether they were armed professionals in the military, law enforcement, or civilians. He wanted to teach them the basics of defensive pistol fighting. And the platform of choice, of course, was the 1911. So what we've done here is we have gathered a wide variety of these pistols to kind of compare and contrast them and just see you know, what we think about them. The Ur model, the basic model, is this little beauty here. This is a CMP gun and is as close to an original 1911 as you're gonna find. This is an A1 model that was built in 1944 and it has a, a Remington frame and an Ithaca slide which is pretty standard actually, that sort of mix and match modularity was one of the ideas behind this pistol. And the features are instantly recognizable to anybody who's uh, kind of been around the firearms world. You've got the classic single action design, the clean single straight stocks on here that are checkered, the, the fine cocking serrations at the rear, you know, uh, vertically oriented, nothing up there. And of course, these little itty bitty sights that are just the, the bane of modern shooters, but is what it was specced with. And, and this guy even has the, uh, the lanyard that was part of the original design um, um, specification as well. Short trigger reach, parkerized finish. I mean, this is kind of the, the purest version of the 1911. And really, it sort of formed the baseline for our test here. Now, one thing that's kind of cool is that, you know, you can still get basically that pistol in a, in a very affordable and inexpensive format. This Taylor & Company uh, GI model made over in the Philippines is kind of a bargain uh, deal. You know, this was really a wonderful surprise during our roundup. Um, it ran incredibly well and is just an amazing value and has kind of all those same features, the cocking serration, the itty bitty sights. The ejection port on this is a little more beveled to help with um, functionality, but other than that, this is about a, as, as pure uh, old school 1911 as you're gonna find, and at a really, really good price. Now, in terms of the defensive pistol evolution of the platform, you know, these two guns here are really, you know, a very, very kind of modern take on what these were back then. This here, we're really lucky to have our hands on this. This is a new gun sight service pistol. So this is a, a handmade gun that they are producing here. They've taken some really high quality components. They've got a, a shop of really wonderful, smart, qualified um, gunsmiths who are putting these together and have made kind of a really wonderful defensive pistol at a remarkably affordable price. Again, you're gonna see extra touches like the cotton serrations forward, a uh, different um, length trigger, sculpted stocks, but really the, the basic um, functionality of this thing is the same. 
stepping up a little bit, you've got this beauty. This is a Wilson Combat ACP. Again, this is kind of uh, that very well-known company's um, take on a modern defensive fighting pistol. And you're gonna find you know, some refinements in terms of how the um, controls are sculpted and everything else, but um, basically the functionality is the same. It's just got these modern upgrades that make it that much more effective a tool. One of the things that, that happened after the um, 1911 went out of service is we started to get some flashier guns into production, notably Kimbers. And new for this year's is Kimber Rapid Scorpius. And Kimber kind of really made their bones by offering semi-custom guns in different finishes and different configurations. You know, sort of, you know, part of it was different functionality and different audiences, but part of it was just kind of the visual eye candy appeal. And of course they are staying true to their DNA with this little space gun thing with all of its cutouts and, and everything else, but it's still a really high quality shooter. And then, you know, finally you've got um, some of like the really, really high-end guns. This is a, a, a Nighthawk Custom. And Nighthawk Custom, they kind of get a little bit of a bad rap. Like everybody knows how expensive they are and it sort of becomes, uh, you know, there's a little bit of that idea as though they're for, they're for people who have more money than cents. Actually could not be further from the truth. Even though this is an expensive pistol, my God, is it a shooter. And this is something that really kind of like confirm their business model, it really validates what they're doing. So, you know, not everybody's gonna have 43, 4,400 bucks to drop on a pistol, but if having best in class equipment is kind of something you are, uh, you know, sort of predisposed for, you know, honestly, this is the kind of pistol you'd wanna put on your list if you were a 1911 person. And then finally, one of the things that's also really cool about the world of 1911s is that any number of companies have made them over the years. You know, you go back into the history and the, the list of companies that have been um, impressed into making uh, 1911s during war efforts and other times is, uh, is quite lengthy. And, and new this year is actually a, a 1911 from Savage. So even though this pistol format is over 100 years old, you know, it is still going strong to the point where we're seeing modern evolution in terms of in terms of the features and functionality and even new players coming into the market and giving their take on this iconic platform so the fact of the matter is is that if you're interested in like one of the most iconic guns of all time you still have this great variety of options to choose from